Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. We are with the 12th chapter of microwave engineering where the various kinds of the microwave passive components we have been addressing so far. So microwave passive components we call because they are not generating any kind of the energy. We have already generated the microwave signal energy with the help of velocity modulation and that of the negative resistance onto the semiconductor platform. So this microwave signal, the transmission is also we have seen in the previous chapters. In this chapter, we have reporting the components that are either diverting the direction or processing it in some way. So in that list, we have the E plane T, H plane T, the waveguide junctions, the combination of the two magic T, hybrid rings, directional couplers, hybrid couplers, and based on to the use of ferrite materials with the help of Faraday's rotation principle, the microwave, we have been addressed the gyrator circulator. So it is the third device using the ferrite materials that is called as microwave isolators. Let us address it. So here we start with our topic. The topic is titled microwave isolators. So from the name of the topic, you can guess what the operation of this device is intended to be. The isolator isolates. So what is isolated because of this microwave component? The question is answered by the name. The microwave signal can be isolated for one direction by the use of this microwave isolator passive component here. So to understand the same, let us take the help of one schematic diagram. So in this schematic diagram, onto the upper side, a simple block diagram has been shown to you where the two blocks are connected. The first block is called as a microwave source here. So mu w stands for the microwave. So microwave has already been generated in this particular block. And to get the microwave application completed, we have to feed this microwave signal generated by this block to certain load here or impedance we can say. Instead L can be the load impedance we can represent here. So now the microwave source and the load are connected to each other with the help of these two lines. Generally, we call these to be the microwave transmission lines. So it can be either the circular waveguide or a rectangular waveguide or micro strip lines, strip lines here. So in between the journey from the microwave source block to that of the microwave load block, there can be several of the components in between. But considering only the transmission, so from source end to that of the load end. So these transmission lines will be having certain characteristic impedance Z0. And the load will be having the impedance load impedance ZL. When we have Z0 is equal to ZL, we can say there it is a perfect matching of the transmission line. So that time we can see that there it won't be any kind of the reflections. So if we have the incident wave, wave from the left hand side to the right hand side in this direction, the reflected wave will be having the reverse direction as shown in this particular arrow here. Now we don't want any of the reflections to come back from the load because of the imperfect matching when Z0 is not equal to ZL so that these reflections can cause damage to the devices into the microwave source section, especially the gun oscillator, the reflex oscillator we can say here. So therefore, there should be the perfect matching Z0 is equal to ZL to not having any of the reflections. But it is not always possible into the practical working with the microwave test bench any sort of the reflections may come in this particular reverse direction that may affect the source here. So there it is necessity to have the reflections to be completely removed or reduced so that the source block can be saved there. So therefore in this second block diagram you can see the first block microwave source 
so here it is the first block the second block that it was the load with the load impedance head l so this is at this place the load here now in between the two there it is to be introduced another device called as a microwave oscillator here so mu standing for the micro and here it is the wave so microwave oscillator this is our topic and as you see can here this is the port one that is connecting to the microwave source this is the port two that is connecting to the load for the intended application here so microwave isolator is a two port device here and whatever the reflections that is coming from right hand side to the left hand side a reverse direction we don't want it so it is equal to zero so in practical case when we have the incident signal to be directed from the microwave source to the microwave load in this direction practically this may reflect and this will be certain non zero reflected wave so after we have applied isolator the microwave signal propagation from port 1 to port 2 is completely allowed whereas from port 2 to port 1 he is getting the reflected wave to be completely suppressed so the reflection is equal to zero this is the significance of microwave isolator here now there can be several ways with the help of which we can have the construction of microwave isolator so for microwave isolator we have a simple schematic diagram to explain the same so here as it is clear that we have the microwave isolator to be a two port device we consider this to be port number 1 and we consider the input can be provided to the port number 1 so we suppose this is having the rectangular cross section shown by this particular block at the latter end we can have the port number 2 acting as the output port so it is also having the rectangular cross section here whereas as compared to the orientation of the opening for the port number 1 the orientation of the opening at port number 2 has a tilt by the angle 45 degrees here now this is the journey in between the microwave isolator device from port 1 to port 2 here so in the microwave isolator as the microwave signal will be entering the port 1 here suppose the rectangular wave guide it is there therefore the dominant mode will be denoted by te10 the transverse electric mode offering the least possible value of the cutoff frequency or the maximum value of the cutoff wavelength here so here we have the orientations represented by the vertical line for the e field vector when the rectangular wave guide axis we have the rectangular coordinate system to be y z and x here so we consider the propagation of the microwave signal from port 1 to port 2 along the positive z direction so inside the microwave isolator it will come across this particular thing which is called as resistive vein now the feature of the resistive vein is that if the orientation of the e field vector is in parallel to the placement of the resistive vein so that time it will completely absorb the microwave signal here now you can see here here we have the e field vector directed upwards in the vertical orientation so this is the orientation here whereas the resistive vein is aligned into the horizontal plane so this is the particular direction here so if you have the wave that is propagating from this particular region having the horizontal orientation of the e field vectors so it will absorb so as it is vertical it won't be affecting the flow of microwave signal from port number 1 so now the signal will reach to this particular region where we have the ferrite material used so i mention here this is the ferrite rod and the ferrite rod with the help of the magnetic field in this particular direction this arrow will 
denotes the direction of magnetic field will be executing the Faraday's rotation principle. So the direction of rotation can be shown by this particular arrow here. So direction of rotation. Now this is the direction of the H field vector in general we can see here this is for the E field vector. Now after the microwave signal has crossed this ferrite material it will be of course having the rotation into the orientation of E field vector that it was vertically oriented upwards now it has tilted by certain angle for example in this construction we take 45 degrees of rotation for the ferrite material here. Now at the another end before it comes out of the port to opening here we have another resistive vein here and again it is having the horizontal alignment here. Now you can see here though it was earlier having the vertical orientation tilted by 45 degrees but it is not completely the horizontal orientation if it would be the tilt by 90 degrees then it would have been absorbed by the resistive vein here. So now after we get it not absorbed by the resistive vein we get the signal available at port 2 here. So from port number 1 to port number 2 into the microwave isolator the microwave signal propagation is not at all affected the complete signal is available. Now if we look at the case when we have the input provided to port number 2. So at port number 2 we have already a tilt of 45 degrees into the structure here. So there it is the tilt in the clockwise direction we can see here for 45 degrees. Now we have the resistive vein in the horizontal orientation. So basically this will be the orientation of the E field vector. So it is not the horizontal one. So it will not be absorbing by this resistive vein here. Next to that we have the ferrite material rod here. The ferrite rod due to the Faraday's rotation principle will again have the tilt in the clockwise direction only. So whatever the end you are providing the microwave signal from port 1 to 2 or 2 to 1 it will be providing the clockwise tilt to the E field vector only. So already it was 45 degrees tilted next to that these 45 degrees will be added to it. So this time we shall be having the E field vector represented like this to be in the horizontal plane the shift or the tilt by 45 plus 45 it will be of 90 degree here. So this is we can say reflected wave vector. So as the orientation of the E field vector coming from the port number 2 inside the isolator after passing this tilt and the ferrite rod will be the same as that of the placement of the resistive vein at this opening of port number 1. It will be completely absorbed by this resistive vein and there will be zero output at port number 1. So the behavior I hope it is very clear that from port 1 to 2 there it is a complete passage of microwave signal without any alteration or effect. Whereas from port 2 to port 1 the passage of microwave signal has been completely blocked here. Now the construction of microwave isolator can also be seen in this manner where we have the schematic diagram to show you a complete microwave isolator. So as like the microwave gyrator and the circulator here we have the microwave isolator having a circular cross section at the center whereas the two openings for port number one and port number two have the transitions from the circular cross section to that of the rectangular cross section. So at port number two we have shown a simple transition from circular to that of the rectangular cross section whereas at port number one we have a tilt here. The twist here we can say the twist is by the 45 degrees of angle here.
वेर एज एट द सेंटर ऑफ द सर्कुलर क्रॉस सेक्शन विच इज बेसिकली अ सर्क्युलर वेव गाइड वेव गाइड वी कॉल द हॉलो मेटेलिक ट्यूब वी यूज द फेराइट रॉड दैट हैज बीन टेपर्ड एट बोथ द एंड टू रिड्यूज द अटेन्युएशन हियर एंड दिस इज एडजस्टेड सो एज विद द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड टू प्रोड्यूस द रोटेशन इन क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन फॉर फोर्टी फाइव डिग्रीज ऑफ एंगल हियर नाउ यू कैन सी हियर दिस इज द पोर्ट वन एज इट इज रेक्टेंगुलर ओपनिंग वी कंसिडर द डॉमिनेंट मोड ऑफ प्रोपेगेशन फॉर द माइक्रोवेव सिग्नल ट्रांसफर्स इलेक्ट्रिक टी ई वन जीरो हियर द ओरिएंटेशन ऑफ द वेक्टर्स आर लाइक दिस फॉर ई फील्ड एट बोथ द ओपनिंग्स एट पोर्ट नंबर वन एंड पोर्ट नंबर टू वी हैव द यूज ऑफ रेजिस्टिव वेन्स और रेजिस्टिव कार्ड्स एज शोन दोज हैव बीन अलाइंड टू द ब्रॉडर डायमेंशन ऑफ द रेक्टेंगुलर ओपनिंग हियर सो ब्रॉडर डायमेंशन इट मीन्स इट इज इन द हॉरिजोंटल प्लेन हियर नाउ एज डिस्कस इन टू द प्रीवियस डायग्राम if we have the input here this has the vertical orientation resistive card when is in the horizontal orientation so it won't be affecting the propagation of signal inside the device there next to that it has to cross the 45 degrees of twist here so it will be twisted here by the anti clockwise direction now it has to cross the ferrite material at the center of circular wave guide it will be producing the orientation by 45 degrees clockwise direction so what it was tilted into the left hand side that has been brought back to the original orientation that it is vertical here so at the opening of port number 2 whatever the resistive card resistive when it is there it will not be affecting the microwave source signal there it is not absorbed at all so it will be completely available at port number 2 here in the reverse way if we have the input to port number 2 we have the vertical orientation so this resistive card will not affect it it will be having the clockwise tilt due to the faraday's rotation principle and the ferrite material so next to that we have the twist and it will again produce the twist by this clockwise direction so that the vertical orientations of the e field vectors will be now in the horizontal orientations and this resistive card at the opening of port number 1 will completely absorb the microwave signal that has been fed to port number 2 here so there it will be zero output at port number 1 so hence whatever the reflected microwave signals can be generated due to the imperfect matching into the practical cases can be completely absorbed inside the microwave isolator device which is a two port device here so in these two sub diagrams the signal fed as input to port number 1 and port number 2 have been described so for the rectangular cross sectional openings at the two we have the te10 mode to be the dominant mode here whereas at the central positions the dominant mode is for circular wave guide designated by te11 mode here this is the simple cross sectional view of the rectangular opening where we have the resistive card shown at the center and the orientations of the e field vector for the te10 mode here so this was all about with respect to the microwave isolator which is very very important and by the next chapter when we shall be addressing the microwave measurements we shall be showing you the complete picture for the microwave test bench so always and always on to the left hand side we shall be using a microwave source either by gun oscillator or by the reflex oscillator klystron oscillator we shall be using isolator before it is processed and further fed to other microwave components here so by the next lecture based on the understanding of microwave isolator we shall be having a practice of simple problem so i hope you are definitely getting benefited with the knowledge we share for the subject microwave engineering for more such knowledge and information if you want to have you can subscribe to ekeda channel thank you